Oh, hi there. I'm Black Bright, and this is the lighter side of Black Bright, where I talk about Love Island, totally different and apart from all my serious subjects. So if you do not like reality TV and you do not think it appropriate to your purpose, you can switch off now. But basically, um, this is the side of me that takes an analytical stance on a reality program. It's a group of people on an island. In this case, in this series, it's in South Africa. And what they do is they find a group of people, they place them on an island, and these people, these individuals, are supposed to navigate all the challenges and find love. We get an opportunity to see how they do that. We get an opportunity to see their weaknesses, their strengths, and um, basically their tolerance levels, and whether or not they are really feeling it with the other person. Anyway, we've got to the point where it's we've only got a week left for Love Island, so they're getting rid of people. We're not quite sure if anybody else is coming in. And yes, so now they've chosen the um, least compatible. And so we've had quite a few couples up for the least compatible. But the show opens this evening with Natalia looking at everybody as though she hates them. And to be honest, she's the biggest game player. I don't even know why she's upset. She's in that, she's in the villa. She kind of um, wooed her way in with Luke M to get into the villa from Casa Amor. Once she got into the villa, she totally dissed Luke M and didn't want to have, want to have anything to do with him. Then when she realises she's at risk, she latches on to Jamie and says to Jamie, oh, she really likes him. And then we hear tonight that, oh, she doesn't think she's going to find a boyfriend in the villa. So once again, she's wormed her way into the villa. So yes, she should be up for booting out of the villa. So anyway, she's peed off with everybody for choosing her, and she's saying her best mate shouldn't have chosen her. But bloody hell, man, you're not in there for the right reasons. And it doesn't work. And she's got this nasty look. Really evil look. She should be an actress. You know one of those Betty Davis actresses. That's what she's got. That kind of look. That looks really menacing. I think she'd be a good actress. Anyway. So we had that. And then we had uh, Mike talking to Luke T. About why he chose him to be the least compatible couple. While he was standing up there, they were saying that they didn't feel there was no connection. But the real reason was, is that Luke T has got such a good relationship with Luke M. So he favoured Luke M and Demi over Mike and Priscilla. And what Mike was saying is that you should have said that when you spoke up, not make up some kind of excuse which I can understand Mike's point because his reputation is on the line and he does feel a bit worried about what people think of him after being called a game player and all of that so that I can understand that so anyway but Luke T he's a bit of a reflector he at the time when he was doing it even though in his subconscious he was trying to save Luke M he didn't consciously realise it until afterwards. And as soon as he realised that that was the reason why he chose Mike and Priscilla, he owned it like a man. He just went up to him and said, you know, he didn't have to, but he did. And I really respect Luke M for that. Luke T for that. OK, and then we had Finn. He's always carrying Paige around the threshold. Isn't that absolutely endearing? She must be really light or he's uh, very strong. But I think that's so lovely. She never has to walk up and down those stairs. Do you notice? As long as he's around, he lifts her up the stairs and he takes her down the stairs. So she must be quite happy about that. Um, let me see what else is there. I thought Mike looked quite handsome with the baby, to be honest. He's a handsome man, actually. But he looks even more handsome with the baby. And do you notice how the roles are reversed on this Love Island? The men do all the cooking, then the men are with the babies, and the women are all sunning themselves on the armchairs. I'm not saying that it shouldn't happen, but, you know, there doesn't even seem to be a balance. 
It's not like all women do it some days and the men do it another day. We see the men doing everything all the time. I don't know if it's because they're bored and they volunteer, but it is quite an unusual um, scenario to watch. And so, yeah, we saw the man with the babies and I think they all managed well, you know, except for Callum, bless his little heart. He took it really serious. He looked so stressed. <laughs> Oh, Callum is so funny. He don't want a baby for now. He said it's harder than bloody scaffolding. He'll be a scaffolder any day. That says something. But what about Jess leaving the baby with Ched and saying, you know, she can't be bothered. She's going to have a, a lie down. And then when he gets up to go and get some water, she's got the ump. And then she gives the baby to Luke M. Did you see the way he held the baby by his bloody leg upside down? I mean, I know it's not a real baby, but the whole point is... You're supposed to, it's to build up your psyche to believe it is a baby and to treat it accordingly. To show compassion and to hold it and love it and all that kind of stuff. But he did find, um, especially with Mike and Shanice, they were really tender. I don't know why they lost that. Apart from the fact that Luke M and Luke T were running around the bloody swimming pool with the baby and the baby dropped out of the pram. That must be the reason why they lost that. But, you know, they were quite endearing and they did take it quite seriously. But I think it was true because Mike was even talking about the baby's future, that he wants it to go to private school and then well, wants her, Charlotte, to go to private school. And I don't think it was necessary for Priscilla to say, oh, you, you're going to only if you pay for it. I mean, that's a bit, that was a bit unnecessary because it just shows you that, you know, Anyway, I won't even go there. I just thought it was a necessary statement to make. Um, what else is there? Um, I'm sorry that Jamie's left. Jamie was a good looker. He was a nice bloke. And because he hooked up with Natalia, that's your punishment. Shouldn't have hooked up with her. You would have been better off hooking up with Shauna. Because Shauna would have been a good friend. She wouldn't have played him like that. So that was a very, that was a shame. Um, what else is there? I think, well, tomorrow we'll find out whether they choose Callum and Molly or Mike and Priscilla. I've got a funny feeling Mike and Priscilla are leaving. Funny, funny feeling. I think Luke T is going to feel a bit guilty now because um, he chose him under false pretenses and therefore he might vote to save him you to keep him in but Callum is been there from the beginning has Mike been there from the beginning yeah Mike's been there from the beginning as well the thing is they've both been there from the beginning both Mike and Callum but the girls haven't so I guess it all depends which one of the girls they bond with most do they bond with Priscilla or do they bond with Molly that will be the determining factor I think Anyway, that's all I've got to say for now. Um, Love Island was on one hour late tonight because of the Brit Awards. I've got to wake up early to go to work in the morning. I'm absolutely shattered. So I'll have to say goodnight to you peeps. That's all for now. Until tomorrow. Bye-bye.